Wilbur and our Bill Wright love building things. From the fastest sled in town to the highest flying kite, the Wright brothers' creations were always a step ahead of everyone else's. Orville and Wilbur had a dream. They wanted to fly. As they grew older, they learned all about mechanics from fixing bicycles, and they studied math and physics. They spent years perfecting their plans. Then, on December 17, 1903, Orville Wright took off in the world's first flying machine. The Wright brothers' story and invention are one of the most amazing in all America's history. Wilbur and Orville Wright were two brothers who lived in Dayton, Ohio. It was their amazing mother, Susan Wright, who built the foundations of what they would accomplish later. One day, when the Wrights were having a picnic in the woods, Mother, how can that bird fly? It uses its wings to swoop up and down. Mother, why can't we fly just like birds? <laughs> we don't have wings. I want to make wings to fly. Me too. As Wilbur and Orville grew older, they created many things, some with their mother's help and some without, such as a sled and a kite. But the reason they managed to be so creative was their love of working together. One day, Wilbur got wounded playing hockey. Wilbur's wound got infected and he became very sick. Everyone in the family started spending time sitting by his bed and talking to him. I will become a minister like you, Father, won't I? You are very talented boys, my son. God has bigger plans for you and our will. Wilbur got better eventually. He decided to start helping his father by folding the church newspaper that his father ran, along with Orville. It was long, tiring work. So, Orville and Wilbur built a folding machine to do the job instead. When you were sick, I told you I thought God had bigger plans for you in Orville. Now I know what he wants you to be. He wants you to be inventors. He wants you to build things for the good of mankind when you grow up. We will, Father! As the boys grew older, they started a bicycle shop. They still did experiments about air and wind, though, which built the foundations for building their airplane. They also built a shack behind the shop for building things. They suffered a massive pain when their mother died, but they still went on with their shop. Then, one day, While retrieving a crashed kite from a tree, Wilbur looked at Orville sharply. Hey, Or, what's the matter? You look flushed. I guess I'm just tired. You look sick, not tired. I think we need to get you to bed. Tie by fever? I'm afraid so. Sadly, there is nothing we can do about it. Soon, the fever will have to run its course. And so it did. Am I better now? After having two months of rest in bed, you'll be fine. Two months? Wilbur would read books like Experiments and Soaring out to Orville, while Orville listened weakly in bed. Wow, Wilbur, all this stuff is so interesting. I know! Two months.
months later. Good to be back. I figured we'd want to do some experimenting with gliders after all this research, so I got us this cloth and wood. That week, the circus came to town, and of course, the brothers went to see it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the greatest wonder you've ever seen, the horseless carriage. Amazing? Yeah. Wow, you can use an engine to run anything. From a boat to a carriage to a Uber, that's it. What? You see, a glider is supposed to fly, but it is still the mercy of the winds. I mean you can't control it yourself. Get it? You're right! We could use an engine in our glider to make it self-controlled. Let's start building it as soon as we get back. Whoa there. First we need to build a glider and see how it actually works. Then we need to learn as much about engines as possible. Maybe then we can put the two together. And so they started work on their plans for a glider. They found a place called Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to have their test flights. It was a quiet, open place and there was nobody to laugh at them. And plus, it was sandy, so if they fell down, they wouldn't get hurt. At Kitty Hawk, they arranged to have their meals with the post office manager's family. The manager, Mr. Tate, was a sedate man who only onlooked the brother's work curiously. Need any help here? Well, sir, I think we actually may need your help. The plan is, I and you will pull the glider for a start, with our will as the rider, and maybe, hopefully, it might fly. They did just that. It's happening! I'm flying! I'm really flying in the air! We flew! We flew! We did it! But remember, we have to learn as much as gliders as possible now. People have already flown in a glider before. What we're going to do is make a glider that is well self-controlled. And so they worked every day. Let's make a rudder for a glider, like we made for a sled years ago. That might help. Let's have a horizontal rudder, though, so that it can tip us up or down. The next day, Wilbur flew with what he named a front elevating rudder. Later, the brothers added a vertical rudder as well and moved the horizontal rudder to the back, which began to form what is now known as the tail of an airplane. But the brothers still had more work to do. They decided to work everything out back at home in Dayton. So, we'll need an engine that weighs 200 pounds or less. Who can build such an engine? We can. After all, we've always built all our things ourselves. So, they began to construct an engine in the back of their shack. And they did! It was December 17th, 1903. The Wright brothers were back at Kitty Hawk. Nobody there knew that people all over the world would remember this important date henceforth. Let's try out the flying machine now. I'll board the plane. Ready? Turn the propellers. Go! I'm flying. I'm really flying. We've conquered the wind. And so they had. Orville and Wilbur Wright were the first people in the world to fly, and their invention of the airplane will never be forgotten by the American people. 
I can fly.